Okay. <laughs> what you doing? Trying to find the soap. You're trying to find the soap? <laughs> so so we are over here, you guys, in um in Horicon and um Hannah is back there with Meadow Blossom Goods. And I came up and Estelle was doing laundry, but she seemed to have lost the soap. <laughs> she needs help, yeah. I would I would help her. <laughs> I would help her, but I have long sleeves on. So Estelle Estelle's going to teach us how to do laundry, okay? So she's got her, she's got her washboard, and she's got the dirty clothes. I should have given you my caps and stuff. You guys could have had Estelle wash my caps. So she's got the soap, and she's scraping on the, the board. She's so cute. You're doing such a good job, honey. And for those of you who don't know, Estelle is uh, Hannah's little girl from, from Meadow Blossom Goods. So now she's going to ring it through the ringer. Hey, Blacksmith Bob. Good job. So now she's rinsing it. So now what do you do, Estelle? Do you just leave it in there or what? You run through again and hang it up. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna hang it up? Are you done? She's done with the laundry? <laughs> okay, a it's a little chilly, yeah. Are you staying warm? So, um, so this is Meadow Blossom Good. Hannah is the one who does the historical laundry. You can find it in her shop and in our shop. And we're gonna just walk over here now. She is explaining some of this and we will pop over here. I never use starch, so. <laughs> like, Not many people do the, these days. No, so my uh, my grandmother did. Uh, everything got ironed, no matter what it was. Everything. <laughs> yep. And if she didn't have time, she'd roll your clothes up, throw them in the freezer, and then she'd bring them out, and then she'd iron them. Yeah, yeah, keep them fresh, I guess. Yeah, one of the coolest things that I've learned throughout all of my research there is that. Uh, some of the techniques have you ironing things when they're not quite dry. Instead of having you yeah. do the extra step of sprinkling in the middle, they'll just have you take it, dry it most of the way, and then you iron it. And that is what I've gotten the best results with. Hey Ben, so Ben is wondering where we are today. So we are in Horicon. Horicon do you know what this place. one's called? The park? Or whatever. The What's event. The it's event? Living History Days. Oh, Horicon okay. Living History Days. Horicon Living History Days. At Riverbend Park. There you go. So should we see what Hannah's all got for her setup? Yeah. I think it's adorable that uh, Estelle is doing laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we don't have the full full shop set up this weekend because it was so terrible weather-wise yesterday that I didn't want everything out the element. Yeah, I can't um, blame you. We, we have the full set of starches. I have my gum airbags. I have my bluings. I have my soft soaps, and uh, we have some new pieces from uh, Carol for our morning jewelry and stuff. Yeah. So, just Where'd you get those amazing boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I got them from the uh, Scotch Irish Woodsman. From the, the LVCC slash Scotch Irish Woodsman <laughs> made her these amazing boxes. I like how Patrick had it. So Patrick is show him your new shirt. Patrick's got his Earth. Dimension C137 shirt on. So those of you guys who, who follow Rick and Morty, you you'll know about that. Um, but yeah. So anyway, he made Hannah these really nice boxes. If you guys need boxes and stuff, he likes to work with wood, like busks. We talk about this too. Um, so this is Hannah's. We've talked about this before. I don't know. Can we see it? This is Hannah's um, box to show what the different bluings look like. So you can kind of see the colors. Is there anything else you want to explain to us? I about love this my bluings, but I'm kind of a science geek about it now, so. <laughs> um, I don't know. We covered pretty much everything in, that other, in that other video. And she's got a new one that we don't have the American. Can you tell us about your American bluing? 
Um, yeah, the American. Do you want to show them the bottle? That is a uh, prepared aniline bluing. What does that mean? So that means it's all mixed up, ready to go. And this is a big case of a little bit goes a long way. So uh, you really only need like half a teaspoon to get this bluing to get your water ready to go. I'm gonna blue it for like a regular washing machine size. I I haven't tried it in like my wash machine wash machine. Well, you should, and you should get back to it. I know I should. I know I should. I just you have so much like less control. <laughs> And then we also have leather blacking. I know we had a question in yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. I don't know if I answered it yet about the, the blacking. You answered it, but I have yet to like forward it. <laughs> and we have soft soap. Those are available in both of our shops. Um, and then these two, we'll talk about these. So, okay, so these are, I um, mean, these are up in my shop at Metal Blossom Goods. And uh, my friend Carol makes all this stuff. So we have some genuine jet earrings and, um, uh, um, what do they call it? French jet, which means that they're glass beads. <laughs> um, and we also have some reproduction uh, belt buckles and brooches that would have been originally done in like bog oak or uh, gutta percha or vulcanite or something like that. So morning jewelry was immensely, and yeah, and wind, hence the small shop. <laughs> um, it was really popular, especially during the Civil War, because obviously so many people were in mourning and it got especially popular when uh, Prince Albert passed away because Queen Victoria pretty much spent the rest of her life in some variation of mourning and obviously if Queen Victoria is doing it like everybody has to do it because she is a total trendsetter um, so you kind of run into uh, gotta purchase jewelry and bog oak stuff quite a bit in the mid 19th century. Bob is wondering if she needs anything made by a blacksmith to make the job easier. I need a blacksmith Bob. Huh. Blacksmith Bob. Unfortunately, yeah. your dad. <laughs> oh yeah, Hannah's dad is also a blacksmith. Yeah, he is. Um, but uh, I don't. I guess I wouldn't complain if I had my own picking irons. I could do some cool videos and like stuff. <laughs> that is something her dad doesn't make. There's not very many people who make yeah, them, but blacksmith dad. Bob does make them. Also, it would go with my oh, gum arabic. Yes, because if you're pinking, pinking you need with gum, gum arabic. arabic. Oh, you all can work out a video deal. <laughs> we have plans for next year. And at then Oshkosh. also, Hannah makes uh, tallow candles too. Yeah. Hannah does a little bit of everything. What is this? Starch? Yeah, that was. I had it. I just saved it from yesterday because I had it out so that the school kids could be like, hey, this is starch. Check it out. <laughs> And then Ben says, awesome, it looks really similar to black powder rendezvous that we do in the Midwest. Thanks for the live feed. You're very welcome. Um, should we go see what Estelle is doing over here? It's actually, it's kind of chilly. Are you guys having tea? Or are you having apples? Are you? <laughs> She's busy eating her apples. <laughs> She's busy eating her apples. Are you sharing with all your dollies? Oh, they're gonna eat that one? <laughs> Aren't you cold? You can cover your legs and sit like a little lady? She's like, no, not today. I worked really hard. I'm not. <laughs> so, um, also, there is a pie contest that Patrick is gonna judge. We'll, we'll go around here. I, um, I don't have much battery left. So, oh, no. hey, Sheila's watching. So we'll have to see, um, we should also walk into, actually, let me do this real quick. I have we'll, like a full battery if you want mine, but... Well, I can do that, I can do that. We'll walk into um, Living in the Past shop because they are, they are the ones who make the soap for our shop and they have, um, they're actually carrying our products too, so our products are getting out to more and more of the reenactments and the rendezvous and uh, living history events, so if we're not there, you know, you still may find our stuff. Oh, there's Lonnie. She's. There's uh, her father who runs the shop. Okay, so this is Living in the Past shop. Um, living in the Past shop. It's not Living in the Past shop. We're on live. Oh, you're live. So. <laughs> Hey Vicky. <laughs> okay, so this is this is their shop. 
<laughs> um, and you know, Lonnie and I like like love rocks and sage and all that fun stuff. Our rock collections are pretty large. Um, some of these, and then oh, see here, like this. Patrick made these boxes, and then um, Lonnie's daughter Autumn painted them. So this is a, a reproduced box painted exact same way as I think it was like a 1780s, 1790s. This one was also reproduced and then Autumn painted it. Um, candles and things, I don't know, I like to use them for ribbons. And um, so you make, so that's beeswax. Right. So if you guys need like wood finish stuff, then you can go to livinginthepast.llc, uh, livinginthepastllc.etsy.com. Um, they just have some really cool things. They have like wooden crochet hooks over here. Her dad uh, is a woodsmith. What a do you wood, call them? Yeah, a wood, wood, wood turner? Wood turner? Yeah. <laughs> Not sure of the correct term, but... And also, um, they do like pockets, embroidery, things like that. They have some of our teas here, um, some of our pomades. This is hers. This is a, a soothing facial scrub, and this stuff can be found on her website, her Etsy shop, to uh, Living in the Past LLC. Our fans are here, um, and this is really pretty. Her dad made this, this setup, but you can see our products over there. And then, of course, she has her soaps. So if you're looking for soaps and don't find them in our shop, she carries a lot of soaps. We carry the historical, so we actually carry the stuff in the center. So you definitely have to check out uh, Living the Past LLC on Etsy because there's a lot more soaps to be had. And then this is kind of like the gentleman's section and um, her dad makes like really cool uh, hand turned shaving brushes, things like that. And our, those are also on your yep. Etsy yes. too. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a lot of like really pretty different, different ones to choose from. Um, and then, you know, soap dishes. It's also, remember, it's Mother's Day, so don't forget about mom, you guys. Like, that's Sunday, right? Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few of our things. Bowls. These are actually, um, he's working on making soap pots, those replicas of those ones that we oh. found in that shop. So these yes. are, these are what, are what he has so far as a okay. um, pretty roughed out, pretty nice though, um, round soap dish. So we, so like our archives, which Shaving. we always say that we're going to go through and we haven't yet, but at LBCC, our archives are quite large. And one of the things we have in our archives is like a soap pot and it has a cover. It's a gentleman's um, shaving. shaving, shaving pot. And so we gave them to her dad and her dad's working on reproducing them. Um, and you would actually just buy them with the soap in mm -hmm. at that time. And they were quite popular. I think they were like in the thirties and stuff, but we sure. have pictures from, I should probably like show your face. So we have, we have pictures from um, a, uh, I'm not sure, like a veterans museum okay. of like original, um, original 18th century uh, shaving brush and shaving pot for like Joe Schmo for like normal everyday people. Right. And so we're working really hard on trying to get some of this stuff. Like my list is like miles long. So we yes. talk about a lot of stuff, you guys, and like it's all in process. It's just that takes a lot of research and development. That our lists are so long and we can only get so much done in a day. So you don't feel free to like just double check on things with me. It's always good to like send me reminders of things, but I, I promise you that if we talk about it, we are working on it. It just takes forever. And so these are some historical ones. Do you want to talk about? Looking? Yeah, these were found um, originally at, I can't remember what fort it is because I always get it wrong. Um, one of the forts out east and it was found like in the ruins of the fort and so we we took the pattern and dad replicated it the only thing that he changed was i think the hole was it was square that's what it was okay. the hole was square for the soap to sit in and then because our soap bars are generally oblong shaped he just created an oblong instead of a, a square rectangular shape so this is what a gentleman would have used to shave with um in the in the 18th century one of the things that he would have shaved with mm -hmm. so he made um, several of these in different types of woods 
and then some of them have matching brushes that you could buy as a set or you could just buy them individually on your depending on your preference and they're all yep. treated with our beeswax wood finish and so they're completely yep. food safe and i was just talking to a gentleman who had purchased one like two years ago okay and he said he uses it for his family to just put soap in sure and so it's like sits in water and stuff which okay. you know if you guys have soap don't let your soap sit never, in water. never but he said water. that it's still in amazing condition like really okay even after good doing things he's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, very good. Glad to hear so, that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome. And then um, we'll just take a quick look at, because some of these are really cute. Her labeling is really cute. So all these soaps can be found on her website, um, which is uh, livingthepastllc.etsy.com. These are the ones that we carry in our shop. Um, and here are some that we don't. Yeah. yeah, what are you holding up, Patrick? The crochet hooks. Specifically designed for older people, but be able to hang on to them. I like the fact that he's like in his cowboy. Yeah. Judging out his, his cowboy slash Rick and Morty outfit talking about crochet hooks. <laughs> talking about crochet hooks. Yeah, exactly. Jack of all trades, right? That's there. because that's how cool you are, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> And bowls and such like that. So, um, if you come out here, there's a lot. There's a lot to do. Uh, Horcon is fun. We actually have quite a bit of antique stores too, like between Horcon and and um, uh, Beaver Dam where we live. But it's pretty large, a pretty large place, and it's really beautiful. I know, like they had rain yesterday, but today and tomorrow are supposed to be to be good. So. And remember, if you guys are looking for pinking stuff, you gotta check out Blacksmith Bob, Blacksmith Bob's uh, website, which we put up there. It's like Bard of the Blades or Blade of the Bards on Facebook. So here, this is like a cute little rainy day activity. I'm not sure. Was right there. Mm, mm, mm. I remember. <laughs> so, okay, um, let me just turn the camera around real quick if I can figure that out. Hey guys, so, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, Do you want to call around? No, because my phone's about dead. Oh, shoot. So, yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, we will see you guys later, and uh, have a great day, and we'll keep up with questions if you guys have questions. So, take care.